Good day. So now we move to lesson three of business process outsourcing, the ITBPM engagement. So this topic will be divided in parts because it has about 45 slides. So here it goes. So for the overview, this module will give students an overview of what ITBPM company needs in order for it to operate. It shows the ideas from creating a contract to the preparation of requirements. So by the end of this course, this, you are be able to describe the attributes of a client and service provider relationship, define the following ITBPM contract, SOW, MSA, SLA, and KPI. Enumerate the five core elements of, a, of ITBPM contract, define and differentiate between capital expenditure and operational expenditure. Enumerate and define what are the ITBPM contract financials, and then enumerate the different regulatory requirements. So in module one and module two, you have already the idea what is a BPO, what encompasses the BPO industry, its definition, and then the different types of outsourcing, the reasons why company outsource so that they can focus on their core activities. Um, what are the benefits of outsourcing as well? So now, before an organization or a company outsource its its with some parts of its business business processes, they have to know what uh, what do they need from the third party or their service provider. At the same time, what does the service provider need, or what do they have to expect? from their client as well, because this is a business engagement. Both parties should and should come to an understanding on what one should deliver and what one should receive, okay? So for this, for this uh, module, we are going to, to discuss about that. And I believe you already have business law on obligations and contracts. So technically, um, the ITBPM contracts somehow um, as not somehow, but it is an example of a contract. And you already have an understanding what is in a contract or what are the stipulations in a contract. So here, this is specific to a ITBPM contract. So the client service provider relationship here, these are the concerns of the client. These are the questions. I think there are five, six questions that um, a client should consider when choosing a, a service provider. So first, will the vendor be reliable? So under this question, you have to check on the vendor's history the number of years they have been providing services, and then check their current financials, financial status, because what if they don't have enough capital? How can they provide you with the services you needed? Check the number of employees, because what if you need a lot of employee and then they keep on letting their employees do overtime? It's gonna burn out the employees. So if, and if employees are burned out, one way or the other, the quality of service they're going to provide you may not be that of good quality. And of course, are there any testimonials from other clients in case they have other cl clients they are, they've been providing service to? And then if there's, there's a positive um, test testimonies from their clients, then probably you might you might consider them to be your service provider. So you are going to have a checklist on what do you really want from your 
not just want but need from your service provider. So number two, will the quality of products and services provided by the vendor meet your expectation? So how can you do this? You can look up the customer reference provided by the vendor. You can go to a free trial from the vendor, what the vendor's office, or you can check whether they are ISO certified or among any other certification that they have um, pertaining to quality. For instance, in the Philippines, there are only two hospitals that are certified, not ISO certified, huh? but certified in terms of quality by um, certification body of for the hospitals, and that is Chongwa and St. Luke. So if you're look, looking for a quality hospitals that really bears a the seal of being being of good quality, then you go to Chongwa or St. Luke. Chongwa is in Cebu, St. Luke's is in Luzon. So you might probably hear in the radio there's this one advertisement. Uh, actually they have different product lines and in the radio they have this at the end of the advertisement it says ISO certified world class quality so they're actually giving you the notion that if you purchase in our product you are we are assuring you that um, our product is of great quality and we also have school here in our province that who is ISO certified um, that is St. Paul University Dumaguete so that's why they really post it in big um, tar, huge tarpaulins that they are, they are ISO certified because it's telling you because if we study in St. Paul's we are going to be the client and they are the service provider so they are telling us that you are assured of quality education if you come into our our business because we are ISO certified so among other certi like i said among other certificates that's why businesses posts their seals market their seals of good quality and best of quality because this is one way of telling the the client the customers that they are of great quality so you also as a client you also have to look for this to really understand and to really know whether your service provider or the your chosen service provider is of good quality or they have a track of being good quality so third will i be made aware of the total life cycle total life cycle cost of the service. So what is this? The client should be made, should be made aware of the total product cost that can accrue over the course of product life cycle. So are you being aware or are they telling you what are the product life cycle costs because if you have to be transparent also with your dealings of your with your um service provider and you as a client because this will actually ensure you that there are no hazy or vague area in your agreement will the vendor keep my confidential data safe the vendor should take data privacy seriously by providing data security on two levels so infrastructure security includes firewalls, access control, data encryption, among others. Human resource security that involves free recruitment check and signing of non-disclosure agreement. So actually, if I am a, the client and you are the service provider, I have to make sure that certain data should not leak out of the company or out of our contract. And that's why some employees, uh, it's not only there about two, two levels, not only the security of the infrastructure and the software and the likes or the, the technology, but also um, security also of that you can get from the people. That's why you would sign 
non-disclosure agreement, meaning once you sign the non-disclosure ag agreement, when you get out of this institution, you're bound to the secrecy on what you have learned or what are the things that you're not supposed to just flaunt it to anybody. So that's so you have to make sure that when you choose a service provider, are they able to provide this? Or will they provide this to you? Okay. So number five, will the vendor deliver as per the specified deadline to ensure that your work gets completed with a pre-agreed deadline? So choose a vendor with strong client referrals. Take care that realistic deadlines are set to start with. So if your deadline is to deliver, if what you have agreed is that your, your service provider will provide or deliver the intended service within a specific time frame or within a specific quality, then make sure also that they have strong referral, meaning you have known or you have other people, other businesses refer this to you. Actually, where we, it's not only in ITBPM contract or in ITBPM agreement that we prefer or we prefer referrals in employment or even if you ask your friends or you crowdsource, we're in, you ask, where can I buy quality this or quality that or and then, or where can I dive in wherein, wherein I can avail of this and that? And then there will be a lot of comments on the comment section or some of your friends may probably um, refer you. Ah, you have to go to, to this restaurant because they offer this, they offer that and the likes. So next, will the vendor's problem with employee attrition affects me? So yes, they may to be on the safe side, Cho choose a vendor with sufficient number of cross-trained employees, choose a vendor with enough employee buffer capacity. So what is employee attrition? The degree or the rate of employee getting out of your, of the business, like they only, you hire them for you hire them for the purpose of regu regularization however after 3 months they get out of work or they stop working from you so choose a vendor with sufficient number of cross trained employees meaning if 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 i am the if i am on the foot of the of the service provider my employees uh, are trained to handle at least two accounts or at least three accounts or three similar accounts and the like so that in case you there is a lot of employee turnover in a certain account and you have more employee in another account then you can get some of those employee to cover up those who quits the company so and then, of course, not only cross-train employees, but make sure that they have a lot of employees in case you need to buffer um, the services that you, right? So you have to really uh, make a decision to, to choose a company with enough buffer capacity at the same time, cross-train employees. So the seventh will be able, will, I be liable to face unknown risk by outsourcing. So unknown risk can affect a business at any given time. And then when every time a company considered outsourced, there's always that risk. If you are a financial management major, you cannot get rid of risk, but you can avoid and manage risk, right? So take time to analyze and study the various risks involved in the in outsourcing because you cannot you may not be able to avoid it completely but at least when it happens you can manage manage it and mitigate it somehow 
So have a suitable backup plan in place in case anything goes wrong. That's why you can multi-source. You know, um, just like what happened when there's a, I think that was, no, not Yolanda. I think Sendong were in, there's devastation in the province. And then um, I've heard this to some of my friends who are working in the in a BPO company. So we don't have power here. And then a BPO company cannot handle all, most or all of the calls. There's a lot of queuing. So they transfer some of the calls to Cebu and Bacolod. So these are their backup plans. They, they don't only have one, one service provider because they know that we do not, they know that there are certain events that is that are out of control, just like um, typhoons and the likes. So those are just examples. They, the risk is still there, but they are able to manage the risk. So choose a vendor who are willing to invest in a reliable business continuity, disaster recovery, and mitigation plan. So actually, we're going to discuss um, business continuity plan in the next, I think, module six or module five. So as an, uh, an example of business continuity wherein you can still do business despite that there's already something that has happened is like there will be a power outage. That's why you have a generator to, to power the companies, computers and the likes and still provide services. So this is, those are just examples of um, investing in business continuity or business continuity are risk mitigating plan. So eight, will the vendor be transparent and deal fairly in your financial dealings? So insist that the vendor agreed to fully transparent and fair financial dealings before signing the contract. Check up past client references to see if they have faced any problems with, excuse me, the vendor in questions. So technically a contract should be black and white. And then you have, because when the client enters into this contract, they mean business. And then the service provider who enters into this contract, they also mean business. So make sure that both parties should also be transparent in their financial dealings. Because at the end of the day, everybody wants to win because this is business. Everybody wants to. They are the one who outsource wants to lessen its cost of production probably. And then the one, the third, the service provider is also a business who wants to gain profit from the contract, okay? So nine, will the offshore vendor comply with our statutory laws and regulation? Offshore vendor may not be fully aware of the statutory laws and regulation of the country to which the client belongs. Violation of such laws may entail the client for to moral, if not legal, damage. The client should choose a vendor who is aware of and willing to abide by the laws and regulations of the client's home jurisdiction, especially regarding employee working condition, environmental concerns, privacy and infringement rules, among others. So what are this? Offshore means, let's just say, a U.S.-based company outsource some of its processes in the Philippines then the Philippines who accept the third party or the, or the service provider who accepts the client's offer of engaging in business should understand the laws and regulation of U.S. Likewise, the U.S.-based company should also understand the laws and regulations of the Philippines. That's why... U.S.-based company engaging business in the Philippines in terms of BPO is in the BPO industry. They have double, double, what you call this? The holidays. They enjoy the holidays in the U.S. They enjoy the holidays in the Philippines. They may have double pace during that time. That's why if you have, you have um, friends in a BPO company whose company they are serving, are that uh, are US based? You you can see them posting po posting on Facebook during during a certain holiday like Black Friday, Happy Black Black Saturday, Black Friday. I don't know. They post that, and we don't have Black Saturday or Black 
Black Saturday, Black Saturday in, in the Philippines, right? But they're posting that because um, the service provider that, that they are working with understand the statutory laws of U.S. At the same time, U.S. understand that there are a lot of holidays in the Philippines and they also understand that, that we, we celebrate this and that and those. So it is really important that they are willing to abide the laws and regulations of the client. So the service provider understands that. So choose a service provider who understands that. Not just understand, but abide to that. Then, will the vendor's culture match that of my organization? Well, the vendor's culture may not match that of your organization in all scores because we ha have unique cultural differences. A certain degree of similarity must exist with regard to business ethics and workplace culture. So that's why um, a lot of US-based company in terms of calls and the likes chooses the Philippines, actually the Philippines and India are raising the top one on who's better and blah, blah, blah provider in terms of the communication, BPO, call center, contact centers, because there's a certain similarities or a certain context where they, they agree. Culture, not all, because we cannot, we cannot be the same in all scores in terms of organizational culture because no culture is no culture that is very, very similar. One way or the other, there are differences in that. And what is important is you agreed on some so that business um, business goes on and you are able to provide you are able to provide what is being stipulated in your contract. So now we move to the concern of the service provider. Uh, the 10 things that we have discussed a while ago is the concern of the client. Now the concern of the service provider, the one who is going to provide the service, the SOW or the scope of work. So what is what are the details when the service are what when the services are required defines the service or task and the condition for payment and dispute dispute settlements foundation of a service contract gives a clear directions to the service provider before work begins so scope of work um in your research or in your in your feasibility study in the future this is the boundaries of what encompasses the work to be done by the service provider. If in stipulated in the contract that you are only to handle calls and complaints, then it is only up to that. More than that, you're not anymore responsible. That's why when there are certain calls, they will just, I'm ah, sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. I will just report that to the blah, 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 to the blah, blah, blah. I will just make that report. It's because the what encompasses the, the, their job is only within that bounds. They cannot answer more than that. They either, they either escalate that to the supervisor or whoever, or they will say that they will take note of that so that they can report that to the client and then tell the client, this is not part of my job, but these are the usual complaints of your, of your customers. So that's the first. Next is performance metric. Measurement and management are continuous process that identify and eliminate process inefficiencies at an early stage. What to measure? So vendor capability, the quality of service delivered. That's why also, guys, if as part of the contract and part of motivation, when a service provider's employees reach a certain 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 quota, no absences and the likes, they provide they provide uh, incentives. And then, what is the cost of the service? Um, cost of the service in, includes 
um, how much, if I do this, how much is the pay or how much is the cost in doing this? Uh, I give you an example of a cost of service. I don't, it has probably increased or decreased, depends. But before, way back 2015, probably, I asked a friend, um, a, a bank, bank personnel, they really encourage, especially the millennials and the younger generation, the Gen Zers, when they open the, an account, they encourage them to have ATM, ATM card, rather than a passbook. Why? Because transacting with a teller when you cost them more than you than you transact on an ATM machine. Why? Let's just say when you transact on a teller, it will cost them about 75 pesos per client. So if there are a thousand clients per day, it will cost them how much? 75,000? 7,500? You do the math. However, when the client transact on an ATM machine that will only what cost that in terms of time, it's faster, right? So when you will transact on an ATM machine, it will only cost 11 pesos per person. So imagine the difference. So that's the cost of service when you avail of a service through a teller compared to that an ATM machine. That's why they encourage you to have an ATM card so that it's uh, conveni convenient to both parties. Probably more convenient to them than to us. Probably, I don't know. It depends upon you. Upon you. For me, ATM is really, really convenient compared to queuing in line um, inside a bank wherein you have to wait for one hour just to be able to be accommodated compared to the ATM machine wherein if you don't if your bank your ATM machine bank that did not provide you with cash and you can go to another bank and just pay a certain amount of service charge right so that's okay so the SLA or the service level agreement compliance infrastructure capability Technological advancements, staff expertise or ex exception handling ability, intangible aspects of vendors' performance such as innovation and flexibility. So the value added to customer service process and reduction of time to market to determine outsourcing success. So these are the things that the service provider should be concerned of. Vendor capability, value add to customer service process, and then reduction of time to market to determine outsourcing success. So benchmark to ensure work, but what do you understand with the word benchmark? You as an individual, who are you benchmarking to or with? You don't benchmark with someone who is less progressive or, or someone who is lower than you. Would you benchmark with that? That's, that's stupidity when you benchmark from someone who is less progressive than you. That's why um, company benchmark from someone who is performing better than them because they want to be like them to perform better. So this is also a concern of service provider. They want to know if there's a benchmark for comparison as a uh, baseline comparison such as historical trends and what if scenarios including insourcing or using of the different types of provider or the total cost of ownership change in key financial parameters revenue among others deviation from ROI you benchmark your financials na kay point of reference like if you want to benchmark yourself with Microsoft, the founder of Microsoft or the founder of Google or the founder of Apple, then you will look up or you will look at how he has done 
or what are his or what are their strategy in order to achieve that for your company or for yourself, probably, if you benchmarks from someone. You cannot copy everything they have done, but you can get inspiration and ideas on how to do it. Okay, that's benchmarking. So benchmark to ensure work quality in terms of operational efficiency and service quality. So quality, accuracy, reliability, availability. Time, it, quality in time, the delivery speed, response rate, continuous update. Actually, um, in time delivery, this is actually somehow done by Lazada or Shopee. Del delivery speed, they, they tell you that it will be delayed because of this and that, and then they will respond. If you click something, you will respond. And then continuous update. Your parcel is already in the blah, blah, blah hub. Your parcel will be delivered tomorrow. Someone will text you. Someone will call you. That's continuous update. It's part actually of service quality. Customer use, customer and user satisfaction. Satisfaction can be, can be way depends upon the customer because one customer may be satisfied from the services that you provide. The other cannot, do not, or did not um, experience satisfaction from the, from the services you have provided because um, how satisfaction is dependent and relative from one people to another, or one individual from another. Because what may be satisfying for me may not be satisfying for, for you. So that's actually um, dependent upon. And how they do this in order to really get whether customers are satisfied or not, they ask or they, they have surveys. Sometimes you have to answer a survey with a smiley. Sometimes you have to rate it from satisfied, not satisfied, very satisfied, and the like. And then operational expertise and adaptability. So the ability of the, um, the client or the service provider in terms of operation expertise and adaptability. And of course, creative solutions and, and handling different challenges that may arise security of tasks and documentation. So documentations are very, very important and security of tasks is part also in privacy of data and non-disclosure um, agreement for both parties. So benchmark to ensure quality in terms of relationship strategy and growth. So communication, communication between the client and the service provider should be timely, sincere, Impartial. What do you understand by the word impartial? Not bias. And then open. And of course, collaboration in terms of problem solving, adhering to requirements. Conflict resolutions in case it may arise. Positive interaction, of course, flexibility. Strategy alignment of goals and visions by both parties. It is important that um, your the third party or the service provider is your um, supplier actually of a service you make sure that you align or your goals have aligned because once it is not aligned one way or the other the service provider may fail in providing you with the right service and the client may not be able to achieve the goals of the organization and then meeting outsourcing objective what are the the objective of both parties why they outsource and benefits and competitive advantage and of course growth um, client should provide training and improvement programs increase in employee efficiency so actually i have a friend he she was working in one of the bpo companies in the city and then she was a top performer and because she was a top performer she was sent to the u.s to have training and improvement and improve how they're going to do the job. And then after their two, three months of training in the US, they were sent back here in the Philippines and then they have to echo what they have learned to their um, co-employees. And this, because of this training, it increased employee efficiency and effectivity and thus in result um, productivity. So that's it. So that will be the end of part one.